All right, welcome everyone again to ECHT. It is my pleasure today to introduce Inbar Klang, who, as you can see, will be telling us about computing CN relative topological hot shield homology. Thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, and I've never given a talk in this format before, so it's, it's interesting. Uh, I think it would be cool if there were more seminars like this. Um, so yeah, like I know asking questions in this kind of thing is a little bit awkward, but um, if you, if you have any, like, yeah, please do. Uh, so yeah, so I'm talking about computing CN relative topological Hochschild homology. And this is a joint project with Catherine Adamic, Tina Gerhardt, Catherine Hess, and Hannah Kong. Um, so we worked on it uh, over the summer in Bonn and um, yeah, and I really like it. So maybe, uh, maybe before I say anything about computing CN relative topological Hochschild homology, I should say what CN relative topological Hochschild homology is. Um, so I'll start with like some brief reminder on THH and uh, like, yeah, how, how I like to think of it and some tools for computing THH. Okay. So um, for topological Hochschild homology, the input is a ring spectrum R. And then you do the cyclic bar construction. So this has at level Q, um, R matched with itself Q plus one times. And then the degeneracy maps in this simplicial thing are insert identities. Uh, the face maps are mostly multiplied to adjacent, uh, adjacent things together, um, except for the last face map, the DQ map, which is a little bit more interesting. So you take the last copy of R, you uh, rotate it to the front, and then multiply it with the first one. Um, so that's the DQ uh, face map. And then THH is basically the geometric realization of this simplicial spectrum. So some intuition for this is um, like maybe you like to think of THH as R smashed with itself S1 times. So there's the simplicial model for the circle, which is uh, at a uh, simplicial level Q, you have Q plus one simplices. And so if you do that, this is, this is exactly the model for the cyclic bar construction. Um, Engelweit, Blumberg, Gerhard, Hill, Lawson, and Mandel, which from now on I'll refer to as ABGH, LM, um, defined it as a norm. So you can think of it as norming up the ring spectrum R from the trivial group to S1. And they also showed that if you think about that way, it's a cyclotomic spectrum. And so, uh, so you can do, like with this cyclic bar construction type of model, you can do TC and you can talk about the cyclotomic trace. Um, so yeah, and so uh, this, this model for norming up from the trivial group to S1 is sort of uh, what leads maybe kind of naturally to thinking about CN relative THH if you're starting with a CN ring spectrum. Uh, another way to think of THH is as uh, some derived smash product. So you can do the derived smash product with R uh, of R with itself over R smash R op. Um, so yeah, you can compute that with a bar construction. Um, and here we're considering R as a bimodule over itself in the usual way. Um, and like, and then you can also consider THH with coefficients in an R bimodule. So uh, if you're thinking about the derived smash product thing, then you're doing the derived smash product of R with M over R smash R op. Um, if you're thinking of the cyclic bar construction, then um, instead in the first place, instead of having R, you have M. And then when you rotate things around, then you just act with R on M. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's also, that's also going to be helpful in thinking about CN relative THH. All right, so here's, here's the picture that I really like for Hochschild things. Um, so uh, if you're thinking about Hochschild homology or topological Hochschild homology, you can think of uh, configurations of points in, on the circle, and they're labeled by, uh, well, elements of R, but you know that's just intuition. Um, and when points collide, you uh, you multiply their labels. So if you think about it, this is kind of exactly describing the cyclic bar construction. So the, um, 
however many the R0 to R5 uh, that we have around the circle, those are uh, uh, representing R smashed with itself six times. Um, so that's like the sixth level in the simple short board construction. And then, um, and then the spaces between them on the circle, that's where the coordinates of the simplices are. And colliding things together corresponds to taking a face map. Um, so, so yeah, so that's like a nice way to think about it kind of geometrically. Um, okay, so yeah, so now I'll move on to um, how you might want to compute THH. So first, just like a brief reminder on how the box jet spectral sequence goes. Uh, so if you have a commutative ring spectrum E, um, you can require that E star R be flat over E star. And so then if you apply E star homology to the P level of the cyclic bar construction, then you, uh, yes, then you get E star R tensored with itself P plus one times over R. So you get another cyclic bar construction, but of E star of R. And so the simplicial filtration of the cyclic bar construction then gives you a spectral sequence, um, the box jet spectral sequence. So its E2 page is the Hochschild homology of E star R relative to E star. Um, and then it converges to the E homology of THH of R. So that's a way that uh, is often used to compute THH. You can start with doing Hochschild homology and then learn something about the topological Hochschild homology. And one important thing is that if R is a commutative ring spectrum, then this is a spectral sequence of algebras. Uh, so that allows you to know things about the differentials more easily because then if you know the differentials on the algebra generators, then you know them on the whole thing. Yeah, I have a question there um, yeah. about, the, about that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, presumably, you know, th there's also like higher structure, like, you know, total brackets and, and so forth. Is that something that, that comes up in practice? I don't, I don't know much about these things in practice. Is that the sort of information that comes up in practice or is it just sort of theoretically there? I don't know. So at least in this project, we only use like, oh, look, it's commutative and therefore we get a spectral sequence of algebras. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to hear uh, input from other people who've, uh, done work with the box touch spectral sequence. Okay, I was just curious. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, like, some questions that I have about the box touch spectral sequence are like, like, maybe you can get structure on it, even if you don't require R to be commutative, maybe you only need to require it to be E2 or whatever. Um, and uh, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, it could be cool. Okay, yeah, so that's the box jet spectral sequence. Um, and so another uh, thing that you could use, like it's, um, it's maybe a bit more specific in the situations that it's applicable, but it, there it turns out to be a really useful and just like a really neat way to compute THH. Um, so suppose you have X some connected topological space, and you uh, have a map from it to the delooping of BO, then if you take the loops on that, um, then you get a map from loops of X to BO. And, um, and once you have a map to BO, then you can take its Tom spectrum. And so Lewis showed that the Tom spectrum of a loop map is a ring spectrum. And the uh, E1 structures, uh, the E1 structure comes from the uh, E1 structure of, of the base space. Okay, so then Blumberg, Cohen, and Schlechtroll um, showed roughly something like the cyclic bar construction commutes with the Tom spectrum functor. Um, so like if you take a uh, Tom, uh, Tom spectrum of a cyclic bar construction, uh, then that's also like the uh, cyclic bar construction on the Tom spectrum. Um, and so you can use that to compute THH of things that are Tom spectra of loop maps. So Mahold showed that HF2, the Matu-Eilenberg-McLean spectrum, 
is the Tom spectrum of a two-fold loop map from loops two of S3 to BO. And that's a, it's a really cool theorem. It's still kind of mysterious to me, um, but it works. And so then, uh, and then, so then lumber corn structural use this to uh, pretty easily show that THH of HF2 is HF2 smash with loops S3. Um, there's a similar description of HFP as a Tom spectrum. Um, they also use this to compute THH of cobordism spectra. And it's uh, so it's a, it's a neat thing. And um, so that's another thing that we generalize to CN relative THH. Okay, so I think now I'm going to move on to CN relative THH. Uh, so maybe I'll just like pause a couple of seconds in case there are questions. What's the right. rough date on the Bloomberg mm -hmm. Schlicht Kroll um, application to THH of HF2? Uh, so when was that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that was like 2007, 2008 okay. or something. Before I existed mathematically anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ancient history, yeah. right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, so CN relative THH. So over here, uh, CN will denote the cyclic group of order N and we're choosing a generator of CN. So that's the same as choosing uh, a way to include it into S1, the circle group. Um, and we'll take R to be a CN ring spectrum this time and like index it on some universe, uh, sometimes a complete universe, but not necessarily. So then you can do a twisted cyclic bar construction. So again, in level Q of this twisted cyclic bar construction, you have R smash with itself Q plus one times. And like all the degeneracy maps are the same, they're just insert identities. Most of the face maps are the same. So all of the uh, face maps uh, D0 through DQ minus one are just uh, multiply adjacent things together. Uh, the last face map is the one where the, the twisting happens. So again, you're taking the last copy of R, rotating it over to the front. But now instead of just multiplying, you are first acting by G on this copy of R and then multiplying. So you can think of this as giving some kind of uh, uh, different bimodule action on R. Uh, so it's not just the ordinary one, it's twisted on one side by the generator G. Okay, and so then CN relative THH is basically the uh, geometric realization of this twisted cyclic bar construction. Um, and in order to do cyclotomic things with it uh, and like, you know, get a genuine S1 spectrum, you would probably want to want to norm it up to a complete S1 universe. So some intuition for this, uh, you can think of it as R smashed with itself S1 times, but over the group CN. So CN acts on R, CN acts on S1 by rotation, and you can take the uh, commutative algebra-ish uh, co-equalizer of, of that action. Um, and uh, ABGHLM described it as a norm. So because R is already a CN ring spectrum, you can consider norming it up from the group CN to larger groups. So THHCN is what happens when you norm it up from, uh, from CN to S1. And so, for example, if you take um, CN relative THH of the norm from a trivial group to CN, then that just recovers ordinary THH. And you can also describe this using the um, uh, derived smash product stuff. So you can think of it as THH of R with coefficients in uh, in a bimodule where R is twisted on one side by the action of the generator. So, um, so yeah, so this, I guess this description doesn't capture it as an S1 spectrum, but it does, it does capture a THHCN of R as a CN spectrum. So you can just think of doing this derived smash product of R with this twisted R um, over R smash R all. Okay. 
yeah, so here's a picture that I really like for this, um, which, uh, uh, which I learned from Asaf, uh, who's another collaborator of mine who's also listening in right now. So, um, so for S1, we had uh, the circle and configurations on it labeled by stuff. And when uh, points collide, you multiply their labels. And so here, instead of thinking of configurations in the circle, uh, you can think of configurations in an n-fold cover of the circle. And so I only drew a two-fold cover because uh, that's, that's as much as I know how to draw, but, um, but you can take the n-fold cover and then when points collide, you multiply their labels, but you also add in the condition that when a point moves to a different sheet of the cover, it gets acted on by the generator. So in the picture, you have R2 moving to the next sheet up, and then uh, instead you get, uh, uh, you get it acted on by GR2. So this corresponds to when you rotate the last thing in the cyclic bar construction to the front, you then twist it by G before multiplying it with the first thing. OK. Yeah, so that's, that's roughly uh, CN relative THH. And so now I'll sort of start talking about um, what you can do with uh, in terms of computing it. Um, so yeah, so maybe I'll just uh, pause for a couple of seconds in case there are any questions on this. Okay. So one of the things that we did in the project was, um, was have some kind of echovariant box jet spectral sequence for THH of CN. And so the original box jet spectral sequence had E2 page that uh, was given by Hochschild homology, uh, which is the algebraic analog of THH. So the reasonable thing to do here is, uh, okay, well, like you need an algebraic analog of Hochschild homology, or sorry, of uh, THHCN, of CN relative THH. Um, so this was uh, developed by Bultmer, Gerhard, Hill, and Lawson. Um, and so instead of being an invariant of algebras, it's an invariant of green functors. So that's like maybe you can think of this as the equivariant version of algebras. So um, I'll just do like a brief review of uh, Mackey functors and green functors, which are the things that uh, uh, Hochschild homology, the CN relative Hochschild homology will, will, um, will take place in. Um, so if G is a finite group, then uh, you can think of a G Mackey functor as consisting of uh, two functors from G sets to abelian group, M lower star and M upper star. And M lower star is a covariant functor and upper star is contravariant. Uh, they, are both, they both take disjoint unions to direct sums um, and they agree on objects. So uh, M lower star of a G set will be the same as M upper star of a G set. And so you just denote it M underline of that G set. Um, and if you have a subgroup K including into a subgroup H of G, then there's this quotient map on the G sets and therefore, there are two uh, operations that are uh, then induced on the Mackey functors. So you have the transfer, which is induced by the covariant part of the Mackey functor. Um, and then, uh, so that's from M of G mod K to M of G mod H. And there's the restriction. Uh, so that's induced by the contravariant part of the Mackey functor. It goes from M of G mod H to M of G mod K. So that's just like, uh, restricting to a smaller subgroup, whatever. And uh, so uh, an important example of this is if you have a G spectrum, then any of its homotopy groups, any of its equivariant homotopy groups is a, a G Mackey functor. So, um, so if you evaluate this Mackey functor on G mod H, you're just taking pi I of the H fixed points of E. So just like abelian groups uh, come up as homotopy groups of spectra, uh, yeah, these come up as homotopy groups of G spectra. Okay, so green functors are going to be um, the ring versions of, of Mackey functors. 
So there is a symmetric nodal product on Mackey functors, um, the box product. And uh, so that's, that's the version of tensor product here. It's compatible with a smash product on G spectra in the sense that uh, one of the ways to describe M box N is to uh, take pi zero of the smash of their eilenberg maclean spectra together. A green functor is just a monoid for this box product, uh, so equivariant version of a ring. And so if you have a ring G spectrum, then it's pi zero, it's equivariant pi zero is a green functor. And it's uh, like entire thing of equivariant homotopy groups is maybe you can consider that as a graded green functor. Um, so this will also come up when uh, defining CN Hochschild homology. So uh, there's also a norm from the category of H Mackey functors to the category of G Mackey functors, which you can also describe as, uh, okay, take the eilenberg maclean spectra, take the norm there, and then, uh, but there's also, again, like a more algebraic description for it. Okay. So here's how um, CN twisted Hochschild homology of green functors works. Um, so you take a CN green functor, R, and you do its cyclic bar construction. So it's the same as the twisted cyclic bar construction in spectra, except instead of smash product, you use this box product of Mackey functors. So, uh, so at level Q, you will have the, uh, Q plus one fold box product of R with itself. And uh, so the degeneracies will again be inserting identities um, and the face maps uh, D zero through DQ minus one are multiply adjacent things together. Um, and the last degeneracy map DQ will rotate the last copy of R to the front, act on, on it by G and then do the multiplication. So it's a twisted cyclic bar construction, except it's happening in Mackey functors uh, now. Okay, and then you can define the CN uh, twisted Hochschild homology to be the uh, homology of this thing with uh, when you take the alternating sum of the differentials as your, uh, as your differential in the chain complex. Another thing you can do with that is um, if you have a like, finite cyclic group G and you have a green functor for some subgroup of it, then you can also define G twisted Hochschild homology for an H green functor R. So what you do is you norm up R from H to G. Now you have a G green functor and then you can take its G Hochschild homology. And so at least for me, one of the uh, intuition points that I have for why that is important is because when you're taking CN relative THH of a CN ring spectrum, you get an S1 spectrum. And here, when you take uh, HH upper G, that's, that's just a, a G Mackey functor. And so maybe for every cyclic group, like you'll wanna, you'll wanna define something that gives you an S1 Mackey functor, except that's not really a nice, well-behaved, easy to deal with thing. But you can th think instead of, let's take a green functor R for some cyclic group, and now we can investigate its Hochschild homology for all of the uh, bigger cyclic groups. So for all finite subgroups of the circle, you can, uh, you can investigate its uh, G twisted Hochschild homology. And another, so here's a, another reason why this is a, an algebraic analog of THHCN. Um, so you have this linearization map that goes from uh, the equivariant homotopy groups of uh, H relative THH to the uh, G twisted Hochschild homology groups of pi zero. And this is an isomorphism uh, for k is equal to zero. And so 
Um, and so this is like, this is an analog of what happens when you're talking about the linearization map from topological Hochschild homology to Hochschild homology. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the equivariant Bakhtet spectral sequence. Um, and so that's going to be a spectral sequence that goes from, uh, that has E2 page given by this uh, more the algebraic version, this Hochschild homology for grain functors, and it's going to converge to, um, to CN relative topological Hochschild homology. Okay, so basically we try to mimic whatever went on for the ordinary Bakhtet spectral sequence. Uh, so you can take E to be a commutative CN ring spectrum, and we require that E star R is flat over E star. So here we're taking the ROG graded E star. All right, so again, when you apply E star to R smash with itself P plus one times, the flatness gives you that this is the uh, P plus one fold box product of E star of R with itself over E star. And so you can look at the simplicial filtration of the twisted cyclic bar construction and get an ROCN graded spectral sequence of, um, of Mackey functors that converges to the E star homology, uh, the ROG graded E star homology of THHCN of R. Um, and so one of the steps here is to identify the E2 page of this spectral sequence with uh, the Hochschild homology of grain functors, so that we really have a spectral sequence going from the algebraic thing to the topological thing. So just a note about the ROG grading here. So like, that's basically because if you're just taking integer grading, then the flatness assumption will rarely ever be satisfied. But with ROG grading, it happens in some, uh, some interesting cases that are really nice to think about. Okay, so uh, so again, just like what situation we're in, um, G is a finite cyclic group, uh, little g is its generator, um, R is a G-ring spectrum, and E is a commutative G-ring spectrum. So our theorem about the uh, equivariant Bakhtet spectral sequence says that if E star of R is flat over E star, and additionally, the generator acts trivially on E star, then there's this twisted Bakhtet spectral sequence. And so its E2 page is the Hochschild homology of E star of R relative to E star, and it converges to the ROG graded E homology of THHG of R. And just like in the classical case, if R is, um, is a commutative G-ring spectrum, then this is a spectral sequence of E star algebras. Uh, so again, that makes computing stuff easier because you know that you only need to see what happens on the algebra generators. So just a couple of notes about the assumptions in this theorem. Um, so the flatness assumption, that's, uh, that's just as in the ordinary box just spectral sequence, uh, that ensures that your E2 page is given by the uh, G-twisted Hochschild homology of E star of R. But there's also this assumption that G acts trivially on E star, and that's coming from, well, you're taking some twisted Hochschild homology of E star of R, but you want to make sure that this twisting on E star of R is only coming from the action of the generator on R, not on some additional thing that happens on E star. So the, uh, the generator needs to act trivially on E star, and you know, that's satisfied in many good cases, such as if you're taking like a... Uh, um, e to be the eilenberg mclean spectrum of some constant Mackey functor. Um, and so that's, uh, that's maybe the situation with which uh, we're going to do computations. So next I want to talk about uh, how we're, we use this to say things about uh, the C2THH of NUR, the real Bordeson spectrum. Um, but maybe I'll pause a couple seconds in case people uh, have questions about the Bakhtet thing. Okay, so, uh, so this case will take our group to be C2, which is my favorite cyclic group. 
and uh, MUR is going to be the real bordism spectrum. So the C2 action there is coming from complex conjugation. And the commutative ring spectrum E is going to be HF2. So um, yeah, so allenberg mclean spectrum of the uh, constant Mackey functor F2. And so using this box jet spectral sequence, we identify the, uh, the ROG graded uh, equivariant homology of uh, the C2 relative THH of MUR with coefficients in F2. So if you take this homology of uh, THH C2 of MUR, you get something that's maybe kind of familiar from the uh, non-equivariant case. So you have a polynomial ring on HF2 star, and you have, uh, and then you box it with an exterior thing. Um, so the polynomial generators are in degree I rho, and the, ex the exterior generators are in degree one plus I rho. And rho here is the regular representation of C2. So, so yeah, so uh, yeah, so if you're taking homology of THHC2 of MUR, uh, it's polynomial tensor exterior on familiar many generators. How does that compare to THH, just like THH of MU? Yeah, so THH of MU, uh, what does that end up being? That's like, um, so THH of MU is like, and you smash with uh, like SU or something. And so I think if you take, if you take homology of that, that's gonna look pretty similar to this. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, all right, so the sketch of the proof is uh, well, we have to verify the assumptions in the Bokstad spectral sequence and then see what the Bokstad spectral sequence gives us. Um, so from theorems of Araki and of Hill Hopkins Ravenel, um, if you smash MUR with HF2, then you also just get HF2 smash with a bunch of free uh, things on a sphere in degree I rho. So for every I, you get, uh, you get the polynomial thing on S in uh, degree I rho. Okay, so then you can apply, then you can apply ROG graded uh, homotopy groups to this, and you just get a polynomial ring. So um, that you get H of two star on generators B1, B2, et cetera, to infinity, where the degree of the I is the same as the degree of the sphere, so I rho. All right, in particular, this is flat over H of two star. Um, and G acts trivially on HF2 stars, just coming from the constant Mackey functor. Um, so this allows you to apply the uh, equivariant box jet spectral sequence, where the E2 page is this, um, this um, Hochschild homology of green functors applied to the polynomial ring, and it converges to what we want. So it converges to the equivariant homology of THHC2 of MUR. And so now the goal is to, uh, to identify this E2 page and see what happens there. So, um, so one thing that's always useful is that Hochschild homology is given as a Tor group. Um, and this is, this is true here as well. So Hochschild homology, at least under these flatness assumptions, is the same as Tor of uh, a store over M tensor M op. So over here, we're, uh, we're taking as our uh, modules M star and M star, but twisted by this action of G. And so this is, this is just the algebraic version of like THH is a uh, derived mass product and CN THH is a uh, derived smash product, but one of, the, one of the components is twisted. Okay. So here in this case, it actually turns out to be even simpler than that because the action of the generator on this polynomial ring is trivial. And so we're only computing a thing that maybe looks more like 
ordinary Hochschild homology, uh, I mean, it's still grain functors, but it's not, it's not twisted anymore, um, of M with itself over M tensor M op. Okay, and so the usual, uh, I guess, homological algebra tricks work in this case as well. Um, so our, uh, our algebra that we're plugging in is polynomial. And so this means that the tor splits up as, uh, as just M itself and as the tor over M uh, uh, of HF2 star, HF2 star. Um, so yeah, so that's maybe some, uh, you can do some change of rings along the map from M star to uh, uh, M star box M star op. But yeah, so anyway, this is as in the, as in the classical case. Um, and so the E2 page is the polynomial thing, uh, tensor uh, tor of polynomial, uh, uh, you know, HF2, HF2, and that ends up being exterior. And so, uh, yeah, so you can do that with a, like a Kazul resolution as in ordinary homological algebra. Um, so the E2 page is this polynomial tensor exterior thing where the bi's are in degrees, uh, in bi degrees or tri degrees, however you want to look at it, zero i rho and one, and the zi's are in degrees one comma i rho. So that's the form that we wanted the E2 page to be. And uh, now maybe you just want to see that, uh, that the spectral sequence collapses. Um, and so the E2 page is also the E infinity page. Okay, so um, here's where it's useful that this is a spectral sequence of algebras. Uh, MUR is C2 commutative. And so the twisted box dot spectral sequence is a spectral sequence of algebras. And its E2 page has its algebra generators in degrees zero comma I rho and one comma I rho. So that's all in filtration degree at most one. Um, and so this means that the differentials vanish on all of the generators. Uh, and therefore they vanish and the spectral sequence collapses. And so this means that the, uh, that the homology of THHC2 of MUR is what we want it to be. So, uh, so it's the polynomial thing uh, box with the exterior thing. And the BIs are in degree I rho and the ZIs are in degrees one plus I rho. Um, so yeah, so at least like one thing that's interesting to me about this is that uh, it kind of seems like the, the twisting disappears. So the generator of C2 doesn't act trivially on MUR, but once you take HF2 homology, it suddenly seems like it does. So um, yeah, so I'm, I, I guess I'm just wondering what happens if you don't take F2 homology, if you just take THHC2 of MUR, I bet it's not going to be equivalent to THH of MUR, but I don't know. Um, so that would, be, that would be interesting to see, for sure. Okay, so that's the box dead stuff. Um, and now I also wanna talk about the, the Tom spectrum approach to this. Uh, so more in the lines of blubber cohen schultz Okay. Yeah, so, um, so I guess the box dust spectral sequence like works in a bunch of cases. Uh, sometimes though the E2 page is kind of a lot to, to deal with. Um, and so you can, uh, you can sort of look to uh, THH of Tom spectra to see if there are easier things to do there. Um, and so uh, Behrens and Wilson and Hahn and Wilson showed that the uh, that HF2 and HC localized at two, um, the island burden plane spectra of these constant Mackey functors are C2 Tom spectra of loop maps. And like there are even C2 Tom spectra of like loops by higher dimensional representation maps, but we're not really going to need that here, I think. Um, so using this Tom spectra approach, uh, we can compute THHC2 of HF2 and of HZ2 as C2 spectra. So for the HF2 case, you have HF2 smashed with a bunch of wedge copies of spheres. 
um, this is this is I guess coming from Smith splitting of um, of like loop sigma s rho plus one, but um, yeah, and um, and then for THHC two of uh, H z localized at two, the answer is a bit. Uh, more unwieldy than that, but um, you get H C mod two, and uh, it's matched with loops two sigma of uh, the two sigma plus two connected cover of H P infinity, and sigma is the sign representation, and rho is the regular representation of C two. And so, I guess one one um, remark about this for me is that uh, like. Maybe I would have liked this to also work for HFP for P odd and maybe HZP for P odd, but um, but these are not Tom spectra of loop maps, so they are Tom spectra of uh, some like loops representation maps, but there's no trivial representation in there when P is odd, so you can't uh, you can't do THHC two with this Tom spectra approach. Okay, um, so so here's here's maybe how we go about proving this theorem. So this is more in the sort of uh, like use multiplicative and uh, like properties of the Tom spectrum functor and of the of THHC two in order to give an easier description. And so here we're talking about an equivariant Tom spectrum of a loop G map. Uh, so we have loops of X to uh, BOG. Uh, instead of BOG, you can take a uh, pick of R for R, some commutative G ring spectrum. It will also work. Um, so, yeah, so loops on some G map from X to the delooping of BOG. Um, and the idea is to find a conjugation action of the suspension spectrum of loops of X on the Tom spectrum and then use that to describe THH. So where is that coming from? Um, so it's sort of coming from all the way back to Hochschild homology. Uh, so if you take, for example, a group ring, uh, K gamma, then you can do change of rings along the map that sends like gamma to gamma tensor gamma inverse. And then you get that um, Hochschild homology of K gamma is a Tor group over K gamma of K gamma with the conjugation action with K. Uh, so instead of instead of being over the ring uh, uh, k gamma tensor k gamma op, you're just over the ring k gamma, and you also have a trivial module in there. So uh, so this is so this is identifying for you Hochschild homology as uh, as group homology of uh, where coefficients in the module k gamma with the conjugation action. So the same thing works for. Uh, THH of suspension spectra. And so instead of a group ring, you can take suspension spectrum of a loop space. And uh, so THH of suspension spectrum of a loop space, um, you get uh, the derived smash product of the sphere spectrum and the uh, suspension spectrum of the loop space, but with the conjugation action um, over the suspension spectrum of the loop space. All right, and so suspension spectra uh, are like group rings, so that works. And Tom spectra are like twisted suspension spectra. And so the idea is to uh, do something similar for a Tom spectrum. Um, and so, yeah, so it, you can do this. Um, and for non-equivariant things, uh, this is this idea sort of is, uh, yeah. Is is around? Um, it was in my thesis as well. But um, but then so in the equivariant case, it also works. Um, and there is this conjugation type action of uh, the suspension spectrum of loops of X on the ring spectrum A, such that uh, the THH is this kind of derived smash product, so of A with the sphere spectrum over uh, the suspension spectrum of loops X. Uh, so this is general for like a G uh, Tom spectrum. Um, if your group is a finite cyclic group, then you can also talk about THHCN. And because THHCN of A is this derived smash product with where you twist the module, 
then this is uh, this is the derived smash product of uh, uh, this twisted this a twisted by the action of G with the conjugation action over a, a, like with a sphere spectrum. Okay. So one thing that's nice here is that uh, so we're taking the Tom spectra HF two and HZ two. Um, and here the twisting by the generator is trivial. So we're kind of already reduced to the THH case of that theorem. And so also in these cases, the conjugation action also ends up being trivial. And so maybe the reason you can think of for that is that uh, HF2 and HC2 are commutative. And if you do conjugation on commutative things, then, then the action is trivial. Um, so that's sort of what's going on there. And so this simplifies the theorem to uh, something that is really just much uh, nicer. And so the, when the G-twisting and the conjugation action are trivial, then THHCN of A is just A smashed with uh, the space that you started with. So that's like the X that you looped in order to get the Tom spectrum and all of that. So, um, so yeah. So. So, okay, and so Behrens and Wilson showed that HF2 is the Tom spectrum of a loop map um, from loops sigma plus one, S, rho plus one. And so from the theorem to compute its THHC2, all you have to do is HF2 and then smash with the de-looping of that space. And so you take away one of the loop components and then it's a loop sigma S rho plus one. So that's HF2 smash with loop sigma S rho plus one. And then this night splitting type thing uh, tells you that this splits off as a bunch of spheres. And then for HC localized at two, um, Han and Wilson showed that this is the Tom spectrum of a loop map from loops two sigma plus one of the two sigma plus two connected cover of HP infinity. Um, and so again, if you want to get THHC two, you take the original Tom spectrum and smash it with the de-looping of that space. So loops two sigma of AHP infinity, two sigma plus two connected cover. Um, so yeah, so I think I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna unmute everyone so we can thank her. And are there questions? So can you can you recover the um, classical THH of say MO MSP of your C two equivariant uh, version of MU of real MU? Oh oh I see. Uh, so um, are you asking about uh, so is this about the equivariant box that spectral sequence part or the yeah. Tom spectral part? Right. Okay. Yeah, so for the equivariant box dot spectral sequence part, um, yeah, so we have, let me roll back here. Okay, yeah, so that's the ROC2 graded equivariant homology of THHC2 of uh, MUR. Um, yeah, uh, so I don't know, so were you asking about THH of MO? Right. I mean, can you recover this from, from that result or MSP? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can recover that because this is, I'm not sure because THHC2, there's also this twisting on it and I, I'm not sure what that does. I see. Mm -hmm. But I guess we know that anyway, right? That's probably... Yeah, so it's not, it wouldn't be a, a new thing, but it could be interesting to see if, if that uh, somehow comes from here. So, um, can I ask another question? Yeah, of course. So, this, this uh, Hochschild homology for green functors. Mm -hmm. um, so, when you, what you feed in is um, homotopy or homology of E infinity ring spectra, right? This is where they, where they come from in the Buxted spectral sequence, correct? What, what's coming from where? Sorry. The, the, the green functors come from homotopy or homology groups of E infinity 
uh, of commutative ring spectra, right? Or even uh, associative G ring spectra. So we're not assuming that our green functors are commutative. Right. Okay. But but if they but if they are, then you have a spectral sequence of algebras and everything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then you have, you actually have a Tambara functor, right? And you have yes. a multiplicative norm. So what structure mm -hmm. does that give in the spectral sequence and, and THH? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, so I don't really know. I mean, a lot of the things that we were using here is that homological algebra of like Mackey functors, green functors uh, works out pretty nicely, um, like similar to ordinary homological algebra. Once you start putting in norms and you have Tambara functors, then the situation is a bit more uh, complicated, I think. We haven't looked at that yet, but that would be, that would be a good thing to think about. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I have a question. Uh, can you use this equivariant Bachstadt spectral sequence to study THHC2 of just HF2? I think you can. Um, so we ran across the problem that the E2 page is then the uh, equivariant uh, Steenrod algebra. Um, and that seemed a bit gnarly. And so, uh, but I think, but I think, yeah, like that, that could be a direction to look at as well. So, so is the issue like a, a flatness issue? No, so I think it is flat. There's, there's a theorem that says that HF2 star HF2 is flat over HF2. Certainly. Um, yeah, um, but the E2 page just ends up being a lot more complicated than polynomial tensor exterior. Um, there's a lot of stuff there that, uh, yeah, that we, at least up till now we haven't uh, really figured out how to deal with. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Okay, if not, I'll unmute everyone again so we can thank her one more time. Okay. Um,